Welcome back. Pink eye is one of the most common assaults on the health of calves less than four months of age. Pink eye losses can exceed $100 per incident in beef cattle. As pink eye season approaches, it's time for producers to take preventative steps to control this contagious and costly disease. Reporter Matt Fleck has more from Central Florida. Each year, pink eye losses cost the U.S. cattle industry $150 to $200 million. Pink eye is a disease every cattleman can recognize and every cattleman wants to avoid in their animals. Well, if we're looking at more oxella bovis, we look at pink eye, we can suffer a lot of economic losses from it. And one of the most easy ways people see this and manifest it is lost weight gain. And per animal that has pink eye, we can see loss production of 40 to 60 pounds per animal. Now the tough thing is a lot of people out there, they'll see pink eye and one of the things they'll see is damage to the eye. When they see that eye damage, if they go to sell that animal, that can cost them upwards of $11.75 per hundredweight when they go to sell it. When we look at lost production to pink eye, you know, we know we got the average daily gain of 40 to 60 pounds per head per animal, the damaged eyes. What that all equates to is about $100 per head you can look at. And that's been documented in studies. Dr. Bennett Flanders says when the right environmental conditions come together with large numbers of flies, the rate of pink eye can be quite high. Our biggest challenge here recently, in the last year or two, has been pink eye. We've had, you know, I'm a veterinarian and I've been in practice for, was in practice for 35 or 40 years and I had the worst pink eye I've ever seen in my life right here. Pink eye in cattle starts with the trauma to the cornea of the eye caused by dust, pollen, ultraviolet light or flies. Once the cornea has been irritated, Maraxilla bovis, the primary bacteria cause of cattle pink eye, attaches to the eye. So when we think of Maraxilla bovis organism, how it attaches to the eye, just take a look at your hand and think of your fingers as that organism in your hand. And when it comes down on the eye, it attaches on the surface of the eye with those fingers. So it'll attach there and you'll have multiple organisms like that attaching. And when those organisms attach, we get more irritation to the eye. We have the Moraxilla bovis organism there. We start seeing the clinical signs of pink eye. Stewart says if left unchecked, pink eye can develop rapidly to a severe level that threatens the animal's eye. So if we're looking at an animal that has pink eye, we can go through some various stages, the infectious process. First thing you'll notice is an increase in the tearing of the eye. And you're going to notice that by some staining coming down the medial canthus or the corner of the eye on the inside. And it'll come down their face and you'll see a nice wet area. It might be a little dirty looking and things like that, but excessive tearing there. Then we'll get some redness in the eye, conjunctivitis with that, we'll see. Then that can just spread. We can start seeing maybe right around the cornea area a little bit of an ulceration, a little integrity break of the cornea there. It can get white and then we can start seeing it spread. And people will worry when they start seeing it like that, they worry about losing that eye, losing that. And then you can see scarring can be one of the end resolutions that we have a scar in that eye. And as we said, that's when, you know, we don't want to lose the eye. Sometimes the scarring will heal up and they'll be fine. But as we talked with those purebred animals, if we get a permanent scar or a blue eye, as some folks will say, or a white eye, you've lost, you know, that value of that animal. Welcome back. Let's return to reporter Matt Fleck in Central Florida, who's looking at ways to prevent and treat pink eye in cattle. While every cattleman can recognize the disease once it develops, what cattlemen really want to know is how to prevent pink eye. Dr. Stewart says preventing pink eye requires a three-pronged approach. When we're looking to prevent pink eye, we have to take an approach of a three-legged stool. And what we're looking at, each one of those legs is vital. Just like if you're sitting on a stool, you don't want one of them weak because the stool can collapse. So we think of a pink eye program, think of that three-legged stool. The first leg we look at is prevention. And when we're looking at prevention, we're talking about, let's use a broad-based, broad-spectrum vaccine that's going to give us protection against multiple strains of Moraxella bovis. Because that Moraxella bovis organism is the one we've got to prevent. Stewart says timing of a vaccination program is as important as the vaccine itself. Pink eye is hard to treat, so we really want to prevent the problem. And one of the first things we need to do is get those animals vaccinated. And when we vaccinate them, we want to get them vaccinated three to six weeks prior to the onset of the pink eye season. As I tell folks, let's look out six weeks, because most of these products that we have, it's going to take a good six weeks, three to six weeks to build a good, strong immune response to that vaccine. Unlike other vaccines, which produce circulating antibodies in the bloodstream, 
Stewart says pink eye vaccines produce antibodies that bathe the surface of the eye to fight the infection where it starts. When we look at our pink eye vaccine, we vaccinate that animal, like we said, three to six weeks before the onset of pink eye season. We build up a good immune response in that animal. How that animal's immune system combats the pink eye or, or the Morax bovis organism is, they shed tears and they shed in those tears we have antibodies in those tears and they bathe and they coat the eye. And there are antibodies in those tears that combat that Morax bovis organism and keep it from attaching to the eye. And that's the key with that vaccine. If we've got those tears in the eyes with those antibodies, we combat that organism and we minimize economic damages due to pink eye. While vaccination with a broad spectrum vaccine is important, Stewart says fly control is equally critical in preventing pink eye. The second leg of that stool is fly control, and that's critical also because the flies are the ones that spread that Morax bovis organism. And uh, those face flies can go from animal to animal transmitting that bacteria. So we got to have good fly control, and that starts be it in a cow, be it in a calf, but every animal in the place. We want to use insecticide ear tags that are effective against face flies. You might as well get one that's got effect against horn flies because horn flies are also a problem. But we want to put one tag in each ear with these animals, so two tags per head. And we want to use a poron and uh, poron insecticide also at the same time we put the ear tags in. So a good way to think of it for the fly control is a tag and pour program. While both horn flies and face flies can cause pink eye, Face flies can rapidly spread the disease from animal to animal in a herd. So we talk about that face fly, we know that it transmits that Morax bovis organism to one animal. And we've used that example today of how, you know, what happens, the progression of the disease. But keep in mind, that face fly can land on one animal, take that Morax bovis organism to another animal. And we see that in herds all the time. I mean, so, you know, flies, we got a lot of them out there. And that's why we want to control them because they're the vector. They're the ones that spreads that organism from animal to animal. So they land around the face, around the eye. As they're landing, they're transmitting that organism. And if you've got cattle that got fence line contact with the neighbor, you've got herds on both sides or close to you, we can get face flies going from one herd to another. Dr. Stewart says the environment can also contribute to the incidence of pink eye. The other part of that three-legged stool is the environmental control. And when we're looking at that, what we're looking at is we got pastures that could be long, high, we want to clip them because we don't want grasses, weeds, etc., like that, scratching that cornea of the eye and setting up the animal for the infection. Because if we damage the integrity of the eye, that Morox bovis organism can really get in there and take effect when those flies land. Ultraviolet light, things like that, you know, it's, we can't put sunglasses on them, but we can sure create shades for them. Dust, things like that, pollen, realize that can activate it. So when we look at pink eye, we look at that three-prong approach, we want to have a good vaccine that's going to give us good broad-based protection. We want to have good fly control, so we want to use a tag and pour. And we want to have good environmental control to control pollens, dust, high grasses, things like that. Dr. Stewart sums up the three-pronged approach of a complete pink eye prevention protocol. So if I'm looking and I have somebody contact me and they say, what's a good pink eye program? The first thing I'm going to tell them is we got to vaccinate. So get that good broad spectrum vaccine into that animal three to six weeks before the onset of pink eye. Tag and pour, I want insecticide ear tags that are effective against face flies. I want a good long acting pour on insecticide on the animal. And I want to be aware of the environmental control. To clip the pastures, keep in mind if you might have to put up shades, things like that. But keep in mind the impact the environment can have. That should minimize any losses due to pink eye. For Dr. Flanders, a pink eye prevention program involving vaccination, tag and poor fly control and environmental management is producing positive results. But we seem to be getting ahead of it now. Reporting from Lakeland, Florida, I'm Matt Fleck for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen. For more information about preventing pink eye, please visit StopCattlePinkEye.com or of course, CattlemanToCattlemen.org.